One of the great spectacles in all of sports starts this week. It's the 2022 Texas High School Football Playoffs, the first round, and these are the picks. Welcome into the Picks, your guide to the Texas High School Football Weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome. Welcome to one of the greatest shows on earth. 352 win or go home games this weekend in the first round of the 2022 Texas High School Football Playoffs. There's nothing like it. Literally, anywhere in the world, this is the widest elimination round in any sport, in any league, anywhere in the world. So welcome to the real fun time of being a Texas high school football fan. Now, as is tradition around here, I'm picking every single game this week. All 352 UIL Texas high school football playoff games. I'm either going to mention it out loud or it's scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Shout out to our editor, Mallory Hartley, who's going through hell to make this video happen. But there's massive games everywhere you look and the stakes couldn't be higher. You win, you're playing next week, you lose, you're blowing up basketballs. We start in Round Rock. 7 o'clock Friday night at Dragon Stadium in Round Rock. It's a Class 6A Division I by district matchup live on Valley Sports Southwest as the Round Rock Dragons welcome in the Lake Travis Cavaliers. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, Lake Travis's quarterback question. It seems like the first time in forever that we've ever had a question about Lake Travis under center, but there's a real question heading into this game. Quarterback Bo Edmondson, the senior, the former Michigan State commit, is back from injury, has played in the past couple of games, but he hasn't started really all year. It's been really a lot of Caden Leone uh, stepping up in a big way under center. And he's performed really admirably, getting them to the playoffs to this point. But Bo Edmondson is the senior. He was the returning starter entering the season. But there's got to be a little bit of a rust factor, right? Caden Leone's fresh. He's the guy who started all year long. Hank Carter's got a real question uh, to answer this week as far as who is going to start at quarterback and who's going to play at quarterback in a win-or-go-home situation. So how does Lake Travis answer that quarterback question. Key number two, Mason Cochran on the move. So we're going to talk about the Round Rock quarterback now, Mason Cochran, the junior, who has really stepped up in a big way for the Dragons. And yes, he's their leading rusher, a thousand yard rusher, but I think that does not tell the whole story about what makes him so dangerous, specifically because I think his legs allow him to extend plays, keep his eyes downfield, and keep the passing play alive. He's not a guy who's necessarily going to tuck and run at every opportunity to do it. He's a guy who wants to extend the play and find receivers down the field. Now, the Lake Travis defense is going to make that tough on him, especially with what has been a pretty darn good front seven. So, can Mason Cochran's legs make a big difference in this game? And key number three, does home field matter in the playoffs? Since 2014, the UIL has allowed the higher-seeded team in Class 6A to have home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs. That's why this game is at Dragon Stadium in Round Rock instead of at some other neutral site there in the Austin area. And that could be a big deal. Right? Round Rock's 5-0 and at home this year. Mean, and meanwhile, they're also 14-3 and at Dragon Stadium over the last three seasons. Been very good at home. Lake Travis this year, three of their four losses are on the road. So that may make a big impact. But does it matter? Right? When we're talking about a playoff game, the stakes are already high. Everything's already on the line. Does home field advantage actually make some sort of difference? Or is this just another game that was going to be a high stakes game regardless of where the game was played? If home field advantage really exists in the playoffs, Round Rock's definitely got it. But does it matter? Who am I picking? I'm going with Round Rock. The Dragons get the nod here, not only because of their quarterback, Mason Cochran, and their kind of diverse offensive weaponry they've got, but also because their defense has been very good, led by William Brown allowing just 15 points per game. Defense has been very solid all year long for the Dragons. For Lake Travis, I think their defense has an opportunity to keep them in the ball game, but I do have questions at the quarterback spot. I think they're going to need to run the ball, especially if they're going to stay in this game. But in the end, I do think that home field advantage does matter matter for the Dragons. I think this game is close and it's going to be worth watching on Valley Sports Southwest, but I think the Dragons get the win.
Let's go to 5A Division One. 7 o'clock Friday night at Burleson Stadium. It's a bi-district showdown between the Lake Belt and Broncos and the Burleson Centennial Spartans. This might be the youngest matchup in Texas high school football playoffs this year. You've got the 11th season for Burleson Centennial and just the first for Lake Belt, and that's a little interesting. What's more interesting about this game is the style clash you're going to have here offensively. Burleson Centennial runs the flex bone. They run it really well with Elijah Zay. They're going to grind and grind and go on long drives and try to take the air out of the football, especially against this Lake Belton attack that is explosive. They've got big-time playmakers, quarterback Connor Cruz, and of course the big-time wide receiver Micah Hudson, who may be a five-star prospect by the time it's all said and done. Uh, so this game ultimately comes down to pace, whether or not this is played in a track meet pace, which is what uh, Lake Belton's going to want, or it's played at a slower pace, which is what Centennial wants. And it's also going to come down to stops. Who is going to be able to come up with those one or two plays, be it a turnover or just forcing a punt to flip the field of, uh, the, flip the field position? I think this game ultimately comes down to that defense, and that's where I think Centennial has the advantage. Give me the Spartans. To 4 Division 2 we go. 7 o'clock Thursday night at Maverick Stadium in Marshall. It is a bi-district showdown between the Pleasant Grove Hawks and the Van Vandals. There are no off dates in East Texas small school football, and this game is a perfect example of that. Pleasant Grove has been pretty darn good all year long. Their two losses are to a team from out of state, uh, as well as to Gilmer, uh, and they are doing their thing. Jalen Bordley running the ball. They've got Spencer Danner back there as well. They are grinding it out. They can also throw the ball a little bit, which I think is a really impressive kind of addition to Josh Gibson's kind of offense there. They run that wing tee, but they can throw the ball over the top as well. They're going up against this Van team that's got an outstanding sophomore quarterback in Jackson Moffitt, but my concern for the Vandals is that their defense has run real hot and cold. When they're good, in their six wins, they're allowed just 16 points per game. But when they're bad... And their four losses, they've given up more than 44 points per game. It's on the Vandals' defense to keep them in this game. In the end, I think that Pleasant Grove is a little bit too much. Give me the Hawks. To 3A Division 1 we go, 7 o'clock Friday night at the field in Pflugerville. It is a huge showdown in 3A Division 1 as the defending state champs, Lorena Leopards, take on the Columbus Cardinals, and the title defense begins for the Leopards, and they have a huge matchup right out of the chute. These bi-district matchups between District 11 and District 12 in 3A Division 1 are going to be mwah! All four of them are going to be very good. For all we talk about Lorena and the offensive firepower that they've got with Jackson Generals, the quarterback, and of course Jaden Porter on the outside. Their offense has been great. This game is going to come down to their defense and how well they're able to contain this diverse and dangerous Columbus offense led by Adam Schobel at the quarterback spot and James Hurd running the ball. Furthermore, this Columbus defense is not going to make it easy on Lorena. Of course, Lorena is the defending state champs. They've got the crown. Somebody's got to go and snatch from them, but I think there's a Really tough test right out of the gates. I think Columbus gets them. Give me the Cardinals. Let's go to 2A Division 2. 7 o'clock Friday night at Bulldog Stadium in Clyde. It's a really interesting bi-district matchup between the Seymour Panthers and the Santo Wildcats. This is a game that I think is flying under the radar, but it should absolutely be getting your attention on Friday night because I think both these teams are very interesting. Seymour is kind of a classic hipster team. They're 8-2 and two this year. They've been rolling defensively, and they run a two-quarterback system that's really hard to stop. The Keegan Gilbreth is more of their runner, Braden Lloyd more of their passer, and they are kind of pulling all the right believers, pressing all the right buttons. The offense has been humming right now. They're going up against Santo, who has one of the best defenses in 2A Division II, led by Jaime Sandoval, allowing fewer than 10 points per game. And they are ground and pound flex bone offense, uh, led by Hudson Thornton and Sandoval. They are going to grind it out on the ground. I think this game is going to be a lot of fun. I don't expect many points. Probably 21 to 24 points wins this game, but I do think Santo gets the very narrow win. And 7.30 p.m. Friday night at Griffith Stadium in Robert Lee. It's a huge 1A Division I showdown between the Westbrook Wildcats and the Garden City Bearcats. There are only two teams from each district in six-man football make the playoffs. What that means is that you get to the good stuff really quickly, and this game is awesome, okay? Westbrook is 9-1 on the year. Their only loss is to Garden City. Back in week five, the Bearcats got them 46 to 42 in a nail biter. And now Garden City beat Westbrook last year. That ended up working out for Westbrook. They went on and won a state championship. Uh, this game is going to be absolutely fascinating. How much did they show in the first game, knowing that they could be in the first round of the playoffs? This is this is maybe the game of the week anywhere in the state of Texas. Uh, 
For Garden City, they're going to lean on John Lopez to do a little bit of everything back there. Uh, meanwhile, for Westbrook, they've got Cedric Ware and Grayson Jeffrey. They're going to grind it out on the ground. I expect another really close game, but it's hard to beat a good team twice, and it's hard to beat a state champion in the playoffs. Give me Westbrook. But those are far from the only big games in the first round of the Texas high school football playoffs. Remember, my picks are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Let's get to the lightning round. In 6A Division 1, I think Louisville takes down Allen. Give me Temple over Waxahachie in a close one. And I'm going with Fort Bend Ridgepoint, just barely, over Katie Tompkins. 6A Division 2 now, I like Coppell over McKinney. And give me Colleen Harker Heights over Mansfield. I like San Antonio Warren over Eagle Pass. And Clear Falls gets by Pearland Dawson. 5A Division 1 now, Forney gets by Barbers Hill. Galveston Balls allowed 14 points all season. Huge test this week against Magnolia West, but I do think that they pass it. And give me Edinburgh Vela over Westlaco East. 5A Division Division 2 now, I like Colleyville Heritage over Frisco Emerson, and Marshall beats Crandall. San Antonio Veterans Memorial beats San Antonio Harlandale, and Montgomery Lake Creek moves to 11-0 with a win over Texas City. To 4A Division 1 now, I like Wichita Falls over Dumas, and give me Kilgore over Little Cypress Mauriceville. Waco La Vega out muscles Kennedale, and Alice beats Port Lavaca Calhoun. To 4A Division 2 we go, Glen Rose gets by Graham, I like Hampshire Finette over Brookshire Royal in a very close one, and give me Ingleside over Port Isabel. To 3A Division 1 we go, I like Paradise over Breckenridge, Jordanton gets by Luling in a huge game in East Texas. Texas, I think Tatum takes down Mount Vernon. To 3A Division 2 we go, I like Canadian over Lubbock Roosevelt, and Hooks beats Troop. I like Lexington over Wallace Brazos, and give me Jacksboro to beat Wichita Falls City View. To 2A Division 1 we go, I like Stanford over Forsan, and Tioga beats Hamilton. I'm rolling Garrison over Corgan Camden, and Mason gets by Hearn. To 2A Division 2 we go, I like Sunray over Shamrock, Bremont knocks out state finalist Fall City, and I like Lovelady over Overton. And there's huge six-man football playoff action this week. In 1A Division Division 1, I like May over Erion County, and 1A Division 2, I'm going with Sanderson over Klondike, and Cherokee beats Blanket. And those are the picks. I picked all 352 UIL Texas High School football playoff games this week. I either mentioned it out loud or scrolling at the bottom of the screen. So now you can let me know what am I wrong about. Leave comments down below. Don't forget that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com where you can find complete coverage of the 2022 Texas High School football playoffs at texasfootball.com slash playoffs. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the first round of the playoffs. We'll see you.